Unsealing the Scroll Chapter 6 I watched while the lamb ripped off the first of the seven seals. I heard one of the animals roar, Come out! I looked. I saw a white horse. Its rider carried a bow and was given a victory garland. He rode off victorious, conquering right and left. When the lamb ripped off the second seal, I heard the second animal cry, Come out! Another horse appeared, this one red. Its rider was off to take peace from the earth, setting people at each other's throats, killing one another. He was given a huge sword. When he ripped off the third seal, I heard the third animal cry, Come out! I looked. A black horse this time. Its rider carried a set of scales in his hand. I heard a message. It seemed to issue from the four animals. A quart of wheat for a day's wages, or three quarts of barley, but all the oil and wine you want. When he ripped off the fourth seal, I heard the fourth animal cry, Come out! I looked colorless horse, sickly and pale. Its rider was death, and hell was close on its heels. They were given power to destroy a fourth of the earth by war, famine, disease, and wild beasts. When he ripped off the fifth seal, I saw the souls of those killed because they had held firm in their witness to the word of God. They were gathered under the altar, and cried out in loud prayers, How long, strong God, holy and true, how long before you step in and avenge our murders? Then each martyr was given a white robe, and told to sit back and wait, until the full number of martyrs was filled from among their servant companions and friends in the faith. I watched while he ripped off the sixth seal, a bone-jarring earthquake, sun turned black as ink, moon all bloody, stars falling out of the sky like figs shaken from a tree in a high wind, sky snapped shut like a book, islands and mountains sliding this way and that, and then pandemonium, everyone and his dog running for cover, kings, princes, generals, rich and strong, along with every commoner, slave or free, they hid in mountain caves and rocky dens, calling out to mountains and rocks, Refuge! Hide us from the one seated on the throne, and the wrath of the Lamb. The great day of their wrath has come. Who can stand it? The Servants of God Chapter 7 Immediately I saw four angels standing at the four corners of earth, standing steady with a firm grip on the four winds, so no wind could blow on earth or sea, not even rustle a tree. Then I saw another angel rising from where the sun rose, carrying the seal of the living God. He thundered to the four angels assigned the task of hurting earth and sea. Don't hurt the earth. Don't hurt the sea. Don't so much as hurt a tree until I've sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. I heard the count of those who were sealed. 144,000. They were sealed out of every tribe of Israel. 12,000 sealed from Judah. 12,000 from Reuben, 12,000 from Gad, 12,000 from Asher, 12,000 from Naphtali, 12,000 from Manasseh, 12,000 from Simeon, 12,000 from Levi, 12,000 from Issachar, 12,000 from Zebulun, 12,000 from Joseph, 12,000 sealed from Benjamin. I looked again. I saw a huge crowd, too huge to count. Everyone was there all nations and tribes, all races and languages. And they were standing, dressed in white robes and waving palm branches, standing before the throne and the Lamb and heartily singing, Salvation to our God on His throne, salvation to the Lamb. All who were standing around the throne, angels, elders, animals, fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Oh yes, the blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, the honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever and ever. Oh yes! Just then, one of the elders addressed me. Who are these dressed in white robes, and where did they come from? Taken aback, I said, Oh sir, I have no idea, but you must know. Then he told me, these are those who come from the great tribulation, and they've washed their robes, scrubbed them clean in the blood of the Lamb. That's why they're standing before God's throne. They serve Him day and night in His temple. The one on the throne will pitch His tent there for them. No more hunger, no more thirst, no more scorching heat. 
the Lamb on the throne will shepherd them, will lead them to spring waters of life, and God will wipe every last tear from their eyes. Chapter 8 When the Lamb ripped off the seventh seal, heaven fell quiet, complete silence for about half an hour, blowing the trumpets. I saw the seven angels, who are always in readiness before God, handed seven trumpets. Then another angel, carrying a gold censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given a great quantity of incense so that he could offer up the prayers of all the holy people of God on the golden altar before the throne. Smoke billowed up from the incense-laced prayers of the holy ones, rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel filled the censer with fire from the altar and heaved it to earth. It set off thunders, voices, lightnings, and an earthquake. The seven angels with the trumpets got ready to blow them. At the first trumpet blast, hail and fire mixed with blood were dumped on earth. A third of the earth was scorched. A third of the trees and every blade of green grass burned to a crisp. The second angel trumpeted. Something like a huge mountain blazing with fire was flung into the sea. A third of the sea turned to blood. A third of the living sea creatures died, and a third of the ship sank. The third angel trumpeted. A huge star, blazing like a torch, fell from heaven, wiping out a third of the rivers and a third of the springs. The star's name was Wormwood. A third of the water turned bitter, and many people died from the poisoned water. The fourth angel trumpeted. A third of the sun, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were hit, blacked out by a third, both day and night in one-third blackout. I looked hard. I heard a lone eagle flying through middle heaven, crying out ominously, Doom, doom, doom to everyone left on earth. There are three more angels about to blow their trumpets. Doom is on its way.